Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your readings for September 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to give a big old shout out to all the Virgos out there. Very, very happy birthday to you. We are officially in Virgo season as far as Western astrology is concerned. And I want to give a shout out to the September Libras. Yes, very happy birthday to you guys as well. So please keep in mind that these are general readings. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like to look into your own personal situation please go ahead and email me all the information is in the description box below yeah so for those of you that are new I want to give you a little bit of insight as to these readings on my channel these are not really specific to anything obviously we are doing this by sign but this is not love or career specific okay this is you could think of this as just the the messages that spirit has for you uh, having a conversation or a discussion with spirit about what is going on in your life at this time also keep in mind that just because these are dated for september of 2019 these readings are meant to be timeless yeah so whenever this resonates for you if it's in september if it's after september of 2019 please just take that message if it resonates for you at that time then that's the message for you at this time i i am speaking to the zodiac sign in question here but as a cross watcher you know this could be something that resonates for you as well if you are watching for someone uh, if you're cross watching for someone yeah I would love it if you guys would follow me if you're not already doing so on Instagram you can find me at divine underscore conversations you can also find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash divine conversations 2711 if you would like to book a personal reading with me please just email me um, Instagram would be a good uh, other another option you know to to choose um, but Facebook is not a good option. Like I, I even mentioned this in my video last month. Um, I rarely check my Facebook messages. I don't always get them right away also. So if you're trying to get a reading with me, the best bet is to just find my email address in the description box below and email me there. I also have all of the readings that I offer and their prices and descriptions listed in the description box below. So if you would like a reading, please read through that and then email me. Again, Instagram is a good alternative, but that always isn't the most reliable, okay? The, your best bet, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, is to just email me, okay? With that said, I guess we're ready, so let's get to it. <laughs> Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your reading for September 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, um, first, I want to say that um, you're probably going to hear a bunch of noise in the background. They are doing construction across the street, and it does get pretty noisy at times. Um, like, it sounds like they're revving back up right now. So, just keep that in mind. Uh, I apologize if it becomes too much, too distracting, but we're just going to power through. Yeah? All right. So for your pre-shuffle energies, um, first of all, as I was connecting to your energy, I, everything just felt really peaceful. And I felt like you were just very flowy, just like kind of going with the flow in the energies, um, very in tune, in touch with the universe even. The first card that came out was the lovers, okay? Gemini energy, you could be connecting with a Gemini. <clears throat> but then right after that was the three of cups. And the three of cups is like a union energy um, you know, a union, an energy of celebration and whatnot. I feel like, I feel like you are in a place right now, Aquarius, where you are coming into union with yourself. Um, and it's almost like, this almost feels like a graduation. For some of you, maybe you actually are graduating, okay? You, you're, see, you hear that? It's all loud again. Anyway, um, maybe you are graduating physically, like maybe from high school or from college or like grad school, something like that. Um, if not, you know, this feels more like also, it, well, in honesty, this feels more like a spiritual graduation, like you are resonating higher. Um, uh, you, you are your um, your vibration is higher. Your vibration is has you know gone up a few notches. I just feel like you're about to embark on a brand new journey. Okay, you're really you're graduating because the 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 the, the, the lovers here is a card of union, right? Of sacred union, and you could see it as the union between masculine and feminine in the external, but you could also see it as the union between masculine and feminine internally okay and the lovers yes is about a choice oftentimes and to me it's about a choice between um 
vice or virtue, vice being the desires of everyone else, virtue being the desires of your own heart. I do feel like you are choosing you. I feel like you're coming into oneness, into a wholeness, into a union with yourself, and that's giving you a chance to move in a new direction. I really feel like you're about to embark on a brand new journey. With the High Priestess underneath the deck, this feels like you're gaining the last bits of knowledge, you're gaining the last bits of downloads maybe, um, you might be communicating with your higher self, with the universe, in order to understand which direction to move in next, okay? I like that. I like that a lot, Aquarius. All right, cool. So let's get into the rest of this here. I'm just gonna reshuffle, and then we're gonna see just gonna reset and we're gonna see what we've got for the month of September for you Aquarius, yeah? Here we, sorry guys, um, I just woke up from a nap. <laughs> so I'm, I'm picking goobers out of my eyes. That's gross, ew, Eric, sorry guys. <laughs> okay, here we go Aquarius. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of September 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. Five shuffles for you, Aquarius. Let's see what we've got for you. This is two for my Aquarians. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month, month of September. Three. You just, your energy just feels peaceful and calm, Aquarius. And that could be a big change, you know, from where you may have been. Things may have been really tumultuous, especially if you've been going through a, a, an awakening. You know, things tend to, be, to get pretty crazy <laughs> when having an awakening, when going through a spiritual awakening and all that. Four. And five. For my Aquarians, sun, moon, rising and Venus for the month of September 2019. Boop. All right. Overall energy, we're starting you off Aquarius with the Knight of Swords. Woo, okay. This could be, this is you as an air sign. Technically, in my opinion, the Knights and the Pages represent the mutable energies. So for the air signs, that would be, uh, Whoa, Gemini, sorry. <laughs> but I do feel like this is you, okay? I do feel like you're about ready to, to, to charge forward, to take flight, to move forward very quickly, very, very, very swiftly. Um, you may have a lot to say. You may have a lot to communicate. Um, and some of this communication may be pretty harsh, may be pretty cutting. I feel like though, it's whatever communication this could be communication coming towards you also, but I feel like this is mostly you wanting to communicate things. And even if, if, if it is harsh, I mean, it's more truthful, you know? There's just, yeah. That's what could make it so harsh because it's kind of like the harsh truth. <laughs> All right. Underneath the Knight of Swords, you have, there's the awakening I was talking about, judgment. OK, um, and so you may have a lot of truth to convey in terms of the of the of the awakening that you're going through um, or that you've been going through or you have gone through. Um, now, I, I will say that awakenings never really f stop until you have reintegrated back with source, basically. But so when I say the awakening that you have gone through, it's an, an awakening of uh, toward, to, to a new level, right? In which later on in your journey, you'll awaken to another level after that, all right? Um, but this either could be truths that you're receiving in the form of downloads from the universe with that high priestess energy, or there are truths that you may need to communicate about your own self and your, the, trajectory, the, the trajectory, the direction of your life 
in terms of this awakening that you've experienced. There could be some sort of severing of ties with certain individuals, with certain ways of being, with certain mindsets, with certain um, belief systems. There could be some of that. You know, the Knight of Swords can be a pretty cutting energy. It could be an energy in which some things are being removed from your life, okay? That could be where the honest truth or the painful truth may come in, the harsh truth, all right? But I would recommend that you temper that with compassion and unconditional love, both for yourself and for others, but also absolutely speak your truth. That's part of this whole awakening that you're going through, yes? Underneath judgment, you do have the Queen of Pentacles, okay? And under the Queen of Pentacles, you've got the Three of Pentacles. All right, so you could be connecting with a Capricorn or maybe another Earth energy. You could have Capricorn or another Earth energy in your chart. Um, but the Queen of Pentacles is an energy of you coming more deeper into a state of, yes, I heard well-being, um, but also a state of nurturance. And, but, but see, the, now here's the thing, because the Queen of Pentacles may be a very loving, very caring, unconditionally loving, nurturing, mother-like energy, right? But she's also not going to stand up for any bullshit, okay? She's going to, she's like a, you know, she can be a hard ass. She can be a no bullshit type energy. And I do often like to say that the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords are best friends because they have that strong logical sense to themselves, okay? They do, they get along very well, those energies. Um, so I, I feel like whatever messages you may have to give, whatever direction you're moving in, whatever things you may need to say, it's all coming from a place of nurturance. Also, I'm feeling a place of no bullshit. Like if there's someone around you that's being destructive, being negative, being a bully or something like that, you have every intention of setting them straight. Three of Pentacles is an energy of teamwork, but it's also talking about the self-mastery that you've been going through, which has allowed you to get to this place where you are ready to convey some sort of truth in some type of way. All right? So, let's get into the rest of your reading here. First half second half of your reading. You could look at this as the first half, second half of your month. I recommend you just look at it as the first half, second half of your reading because time is an illusion and energies are fluid and all of these messages are really just going to be flowing together in some way, shape, or form, all right? But if it resonates as first half, second half of the month, then please, by all means, take it. Yes? First set of surrounding energies of the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, you do have the Nine of Swords. Very interesting because Capricorn, who I just, I did right before you, who is also represented here by the Queen of Pentacles. Capricorn got this also in the same position. So maybe, maybe you're connecting with a Capricorn. Maybe you have Capricorn in your chart. Interesting. Nine of Swords is an energy of, um, uh, of self-fulfilling prophecies. It's fear, it's sleeplessness, it's anxiety, it's worries, it's your mind just won't shut off or shut up. You know, you're just, you're, you're thinking, it's like thinking all these worst case scenarios, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, I feel, I don't feel like this is your current energy. I feel like this is, this has a lot to do with past energy. For some of you, this could be a situation in which you're kind of anxious about some sort of conversation that needs to be had, potentially. Let's see, Nine of Swords is coupled with, ah, the Ace of Pentacles. There is a new beginning here. And for some of you, you're just straight up nervous about it because it's a new level, it's a new understanding. So it's like, you don't really know what's coming. Um, and that could be where this Knight of Swords energy is coming through. Maybe you're feeling on the defensive. There could be some guilt involved with this Ace of Pentacles, with this new beginning, <laughs> in terms of leaving some other people behind that you may have identified with in the past, leaving some sort of circumstances behind, maybe, okay? Uh, this also could be financial for some of you, needing to get a new job, wanting to get a new job, starting a new job, maybe. This also could be some sort of spiritual work that maybe you're starting to embark on. 
and you're a little nervous about it because you might be kind of new to this stuff. Okay. All right. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. In the first half of your reading, you, ooh, you've got the tower. All right. Yeah, so I just heard there's some communication that needs to be had here. You could be the one bringing the tower down or there could be some communication coming towards you. All right, but this is definitely an energy of what I was picking up on, an energy of um, past beliefs, changing the foundation, changing your system, changing how you identify, who you identify with, what you identify with. Switching up your game, switching up your foundation. Like I said, this either could be something that's coming towards you that could catalyze this, or you could be the one that is bringing this to the table. Either way, this is either influencing or is influenced by an awakening, judgment. And the central theme of this awakening is nurturance with the Queen of Pentacles energy, okay? The tower is coupled with, ah, uh, yes, the Eight of Wands. There is the communication. There is some sort of communication here. There may be a discussion, a conversation, whatnot, whatever, that catalyzes a tower moment. Again, either you're the one that's having this, bringing this, this information to the table, or this could be someone external to you. Maybe an earth sign, Cancer, I'm not, not Cancer, uh, Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo. Maybe it is a maybe it's a Cancerian because I'm looking at this Queen of Pentacles here and Queen of Pentacles represents Capricorn energy. The uh, the opposite of Capricorn in the zodiac is Cancer. With that, with it being uh, with Cancer that wanted to come through, maybe this has something to do with family. It's entirely possible. Because Cancerian energy is very family oriented, okay? And I did hear, as I was channeling, at one point I did hear that this could have to do with family, but I just didn't say it. But okay. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, the Hierophant. Now, this could be Taurus energy, all right? This is Taurus energy, so there could be a Taurus around you. You could be facing a Taurus here. But what I heard when that came out was facing the status quo. The challenge here could be looking past conventional ways of doing things. And that could be something that you're awakening out of. That could be the conversation that someone is bringing towards you or you are bringing to someone else in order to facilitate this awakening for you. The, the Hierophant is very much society, societal norms, familial norms, government, religion, dogma, um, tradition. It's really, the Hierophant energy really just feels, in your situation, Aquarius, it feels like tradition. It feels like, um, huh, it feels like, sorry, I just got a weird notification. It feels like long-standing ways of doing things, ways of expressing yourself, whatnot, whatever, that maybe need to come down. This, uh, this really could be the tower moment that we're talking about here, okay? Now, the Hierophant is also about teaching and learning, so there's definitely something to, be, to, to learn here, even if some sort of uh, established energy may be in the process of being dismantled. There's definitely something to have learned in being in that energy in the past and also moving forward into something new, okay? The Hierophant is coupled with the Six of Cups. This really could be about family. This could be a long-standing circumstance by which the family is built on. This could have to do with your childhood. Either way, however this is resonating with you, this definitely feels like, between the Hierophant and the Six of Cups, this feels like something that has been long standing. It could, even, it could be generational, not just within like your immediate family. This could be generational over a number of generations of your family. And I feel like this because 
Number one, the Hierophant is, like we said, establishment, whatnot, whatever. But the Six of Cups is about nostalgia, is about the past. Okay. Wow. The closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have the Four of Wands. This really could be about family. This is another family card. All right. Uh, I feel reconciliation here with this Four of Wands. I feel like either some people could be coming together and reconciling and re-solidifying the foundation with each other, or this is you moving forward away from whatever has been holding you back, moving forward from this process or this, this um, cycle of awakening into a greater foundation for yourself and your life, maybe even and your family moving forward, okay? Four of Wands is coupled with, yeah, the Chariot. More Cancerian energy. This is officially the card of Cancer. But, 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 this is you moving forward, coming out of this awakening strong and ready to take action in a much more balanced energy, much more self-aware, um, and moving in a direction that is absolutely in alignment with you and moving quite quickly. Okay, this awakening that you're going through right now, Aquarius, or the awakening that you're the awakening process that you're now coming out of is really setting you up to really make some big moves moving forward. That's excellent. Getting into the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, first set of surrounding energies, you have Libra energy with justice. Justice is going to be served. For some of you, this may be a little tough to deal with. It depends on your karmic, um, what's in your karmic bank account, right? Uh, for others of you, this can is is not going to be as stressful. I just feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be a foundation shaker. Like whether you're on a not so good side of this or not, it's still gonna be. Uh, um, I want to say, what is the word I want to use here? I want to say maybe abrasive or a little bit uh, nerve wracking. That's kind of what it feels like. And it feels like that because it just, with this Hierophant and the Tower energy, it's just something that has been long standing is about to be like uprooted or changed or something like that. And even if you're on the beneficial side of receiving some good karmic payout, it still feels like it's going to be tough, rough even, yeah? Justice is coupled with the Ace of Wands. Hello, inspiration. A brand new idea, a brand new creative venture. Um, this really does feel like a new way of seeing things also. New inspiration, new motivation to move in a direction that you may not even have dreamed of going in which feels great. But yeah, with this Ace of Wands, the Ace of Wands can be a pretty catalytic energy, catastrophic energy, very, very similar to the Tower. I use a deck for my daily readings, like they're titled Morning Coffee. If you haven't checked out Morning Coffee, I suggest you do so, but I use the Vice Versa deck for Morning Coffee. Um, and the Ace of Wands on in that deck um, on one side of the card, because the vice versa deck has two sides, has two, um, here, I'll show you, I have it right here. This is, this is the three of wands from the vice versa deck, okay? And you see it has two different sides to it. There are, there are images on both sides of the card, which can delineate different meanings. It's about looking at it one si from one side and then looking at the situation from another side, right? Well, on one side of the ace of wands, you have a tree that's being struck by lightning. And with the tower, the tower is usually depicted as being struck by lightning. So the tower with that strike, strike of lightning, okay, that, that stroke of lightning, I guess, um, it represents some sort of inspiration, some sort of new sight, insight, something new coming in in a pretty destructive manner, but it's destructive in the sense that it tears down things that are no longer good for you, no longer meant to be standing. Of course, moving forward from there, it's your choice if you want to build it back up again. But whatever, that's that's neither here nor there. What I'm saying is, from that vice versa deck, I've come to understand that the Ace of Wands can be very much like a tower moment. 
It's a sudden spark of inspiration that could really change everything. That could be catastrophic. And that's kind of what I'm feeling here with Justice and the Ace of Wands, okay? All right, second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Aquarius. You have more Libra energy, the Queen of Swords. Woo! This is another no bullshit energy. Look, the king, the, both of the queens, the besties are here. The besties are here. And what I'm seeing in the Queen of Swords so far is that there's some, some, about, some, something's about to be set straight. The record is about to be set straight in some case, in some ways for some of you. Um, and this is either you, Aquarius, or this is, some, uh, this, this is either you or someone else. This is very strong. This, it, it depends on your situation. It, depends, it really depends on your situation. But someone is about to set some shit straight. I don't know exactly what that means. I know I, I, I know what I'm feeling right now. It feels like it could be maybe someone's getting cut off. Maybe someone's about to say, look, looky here. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be. You're not going to come at me with some bullshit like that or something like that. That's kind of, I, I, and, and I'm channeling for thousands of people, I guess, so uh, potentially. So, I mean, take it as it resonates. But the Queen of Swords will cut you down. Without a second glance, without a second question, without a second thought. As soon as she recognizes that, number one, something is wasting her time, or number two, something is standing in her way or something like that, she cuts it out right then and there. She's not trying to have a discussion about it. Okay? Queen of, uh, uh, Queen of Swords is coupled with... Holy shit, there's the lovers again. It's funny, Aquarius, because Gemini and Libra are all up in your reading right now, but where are you? <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding, but um, yeah, no holds barred is what I just heard. Someone is going to be approaching the situation or communicating in a way that is very much from a heart-centered space. Someone this is either you, Aquarius, or it's someone else that you're dealing with here. And it's funny because as I've been doing these readings for this month, I've mainly been talking to the signs that I'm doing the reading for. But for you, Aquarius, this feels like it could go either way, okay? But someone has really connected to their heart, has connected with, with their sense of self, has come to a sense of wholeness. And this did come out in the beginning of your reading in your pre-shuffle, so this could very well be you, but it also could be another person around you that has reached this state of choosing themselves over someone else, choosing virtue over vice, and is standing in the position to cut all others in opposition out of the way, okay? This very well could be you, Aquarius, because of this awakening that's happening with judgment, all right? Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, you have the magician manifesting, creating what it is you desire to create. And for some of you specifically, this is the challenge here is believing is, is not falling into the trap of allowing people to tell you you're being too selfish or selfish at all for choosing your own heart and your own desires and creating and manifesting what it is you want to manifest from that place instead of a place of what Society or the status quo, te quo tells you you should, quote, should be manifesting from. I can't stand that word, should. The only thing I should do is exactly what I feel I need to do in my heart, not what you tell me to do. Fuck that. You can get the fuck out of my face right now. You can get to fucking step in, says the Queen of Swords, before I cut your ass up and you won't even, even, even have legs to stand on, to step with. Ooh, wee. <laughs> There's that Queen of Swords for you, though. Straight up and down. She ain't playing. She ain't messing around, honey. The Magician is coupled with... Yes! You see? This is exactly what I was just saying. The Five of Wands. You are in a place, or someone else is in a place, of manifesting exactly what it is that they need to manifest for themselves. And the people around them, or the people around you, are like, no, you can't do that. Oh, yeah, home, homeboy? Homegirl? 
Watch me. Listen here. Everybody's got their own opinion. I mean, one of the favorite, my favorite phrases, something my mom used to, something my mom taught me, she used to tell it to me all the time when I was a kid. I love it. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. So look, you can have your opinion all you want, but this is my life. And I'm gonna live it the way I want to. I'm gonna manifest the way I want to. And that has everything to do with the awakening that you're going through or someone else around you is going through. It's like you're, it's like you're coming out of, someone here is, is, is emerging out of the hive mind and is starting to think for themselves now. Straight up and down. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> you know? And if that's you, kudos. Good on ya. It's about damn time. <laughs> for some of you, for some of you, I know that was kind of cutting. That might be triggering to somebody. But you know what? If it's triggering you, then good. Own that. Feel that. Listen to it. But yeah, for some of you out there, for someone out there, it's about damn time. Good for you. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have the Ten of Wands. But this, I feel like, is you putting down the burdens. I really do feel like you're not going to be carrying these anymore. Ten of Wands is coupled with, oh yes, the Ace of Cups. Dropping the burdens in honor of yourself, self-love. Okay, something is coming through here. I feel like somebody is asking a question, but what if I'm carrying the burdens for people that I love? Okay. Why should you have to carry someone else's burdens? They're not yours to carry. I know you love them. They could be your family. They could be your spouse. They could be a significant other. They could be your best friend, whatever. But, but do you know what that's kind of called, Aquarius? Martyrdom. Do you really want to be a martyr? Why should you have to be a martyr? Why should you have to carry the burdens of other people? Okay, well, someone just said, well, because I'm kind of the one that taught them to be this way. Mm. Well, Here's another way to look at it, Aquarius. You may have been the example there that they have learned from, but it was their choice. Even if, even if you were the type of individual that set the record straight, laid down the law, said it's gonna be this way, it's my way or the highway. And these individuals were forced, forced, I'm gonna put that in quotes, forced, and I'll see, you'll see why in a second. We're forced to integrate, to assimilate, to accept that from you. They were forced, but not really, because it was still their choice. Now, we'll say maybe it's children. All right, so while they were in your house or under your roof or whatnot, whatever, they were forced to accept certain things. But once they left, once they went out on their own, that's on them to make their own decisions. Whether they choose to stay in alignment with conformity or not is on them. And ultimately, whatever you taught them served as a lesson, served a purpose. And so now it kind of feels like you're circling back to where now you are about to release the burdens. It's not your responsibility to carry burdens for other people regardless of what may have done, happened in the past. The past is the past. Everybody went through it for a specific reason, and that reason is to learn. Purely, 100%, nothing else but to learn. And so now here you are at a position where it's like, okay, well, I gotta release some stuff now, um, and I can't care, I, I mean, I'm changing. People change. Change is the only constant that you can count on in all of existence. People are allowed to change. People are meant to change. So don't beat yourself up about that. 
Whatever you went through in the past, it served a purpose. You learned from it. Other people learn from it potentially, hopefully. Now it's time for you to start a new chapter. Drop those burdens. Love yourself. Ten of Wands, Ace of Cups. All right? Okay. Let's get into your Oracle Guidance now to close out your reading, Aquarius, for the month of September. Best message, please, Spirit. For my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right. Here we go. Best message, please, Spirit. For my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus to close out this reading for September 2019. Aquarius, Aquarius. Oracle messages, please, Spirit. Oracle message for my Aquarians. Woo. We'll get there, guys. There it is. Wow. Okay. Card number 25. Release the dark wound. Let love live. Okay. All right, here we go. Who got this? Was it Capricorn? I think Capricorn got this as well. Very interesting. You might want to watch that Capricorn reading. Because there are some similarities. All right, here we go. If we detach something from its source too soon, trying to force it to become what it is not yet ready or willing to become, we can unintentionally sap it of its strength and kill it. There is a dark wound in the consciousness of humanity which demands perfection and denies process. If you are thinking of publishers before you have even written the book, if you are comparing your unfinished song idea to the latest best-selling pop release, if you have decided you are not good enough or worthy enough to succeed before you've even given it everything you've got and asked for divine help, then this dark wound has you in its grasp. You have to let go of the death grip of perfectionism and let yourself and your ideas live. Love is abundant creative and inspiring. It moves us so much more joyously and creatively than fear. You are being asked to honor the path of your own love. What inspires you? What feels exciting, joyful, and perhaps even rather different? Let that live. Release the dark wound of false belief. There are countless stories of vastly successful artists who very nearly binned the project that was, make, that was the making of their career because of the despair fostered by their own dark nature. They doubted. They were uncertain. Was their work any good? Was it useless? They struggled to believe in the right of a work to come to life, whether it was accepted, revered, or rejected by others or not. They nearly lost their work to fear. Undoubtedly, there have been many times when this has actually happened and the work was not saved, not allowed to live. Do not let this happen to you. Whether something is meant to be a commercially oriented venture or a more, per or a more personal creation of your own therapeutic healing, it must be allowed to be without judgment, without criticism, even without premature evaluation. It must be allowed to be what it is and only time, love, Patience and attention will reveal it. Okay. Yes, we're going to stop there. So there you have it, Aquarius. Now, that feels very much in line with what I was talking about, about, you know, going through your process of learning and experiencing and changing. Allow yourself to change. Allow yourself to grow. Allow yourself to open up to new things. I mean, yes, Aquarius is a fixed sign. So, all right, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. And that could be why you're feeling kind of like, oh gosh, why? Oh gosh, I can't do this. But you can. You're allowed to change, period. Okay? 
So there you have it, Aquarius. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that, I hope you have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of October. Y'all, take care. Bye.